now we have Trish uh, Goody. Trish has come along uh, to talk about her work with art and how she um, how she gets on with life following uh, a diagnosis of my own, which was uh, in, back in 2011. Yes. Thank you, Trish. I'm going to stand up for a bit, so but if I have to sit down, you'll forgive me, I'm sure. As Scott said, I was diagnosed in 2011, in August, because I, I had no symptoms. I guess I was asymptomatic. Um, but I couldn't walk one day. I, I was a very active real estate agent, and I was running around. I don't know if any of you here have been in that business, but it's pretty hectic, pretty stressful, and sometimes totally frenetic. And this particular day, I was working on a couple of contracts from one place to another, trying to get a sell and a buy. And I had this weirdness in my feet. And I thought, oops, something's going funny in my feet. What is it? And I was a little bit, felt a little bit strange. Anyway, I just put it down to I was sitting on a nerve. Long story short, that funny feeling in my feet developed into a weirdness in my legs. I couldn't walk properly. I felt like I was, I'd had way too many gin and tonics and I was wobbly and had no balance. So that was very scary. And after a miss, I guess a scan that didn't pick up anything, I finally ended up at a muscular skeletal specialist. And he took one look of me, at me and said, straight to the PA where an MRI showed that I had a tumour on a vertebra that had been crushed by the tumour. And of course the spinal cord had been implicated and I had compression of the spinal cord. So emergency operation, spinal operation, and um, they built a corpectomy into my spine. At that point they didn't know what it was, what had caused it, but subsequent blood tests showed up that I had multiple myeloma. So then I started a regime of, as Scott said, chemotherapy, thalidomide, the whole bit, uh, the doctor, through Dr. Millay actually, he was the uh, head um, hematologist in the oncology department at the PA. Um, I was in hospital for four months, rehab for two months, and it was a long journey. I couldn't walk at all. I had no feeling between my brain and my legs. They just, with, my legs were just there. Couldn't walk. It was, it was quite scary, but being the person I am, I've been a very positive person. I've been a dance teacher, a sports person. I played tennis, golf, you name it. I was there. I had grew up with three brothers, so I had to compete with three boys in the family. Um, Undaunted, I set about making the progression that was needed. And when I was discharged from hospital, I was walking with a walker, but couldn't walk on my own. And my eldest son, bless his heart, said, Mum, I've got to do something with you. I'm going to buy you some art supplies. Would you like to have a go at painting? And I said, eh, maybe. Anyway, he did that. He bought me paints, an easel, some canvases, an art book, and said, there you go, have a go. And I did. And I found after maybe a couple of attempts that I wasn't all that bad. Long way to go, but it didn't matter because I wasn't setting out to prove anything to anybody or even to myself. It was as a therapeutic tool to absorb me in something creative rather than what had happened to me and prognosis and all the other things that all of you people in this room I'm sure have gone through in your head. It's not pleasant, it's not nice to be told and to be diagnosed but hey guys get up there and do something positive and creative to get yourself through it. And that's what I did. I'm going to take you on a little journey with the pieces that I've actually bought today, just to explain to you why they're here 
and what emotions I had and how it affected my therapy. The first piece is the little landscape at the top there. And that's a landscape picture of Whiskey Bay. I don't know if anybody's ever been there, but I hunted through magazines. The, my iPad was never without me on it Googling for the pictures to paint. That one appealed to me, although I didn't copy it per se. I added my own bits and pieces into it. And at that point in time, I felt the need to have peace. And I'm sure you can all identify with the feeling that you need to have peace. And it's so hard when you're on treatment because your mind is scrambled, you're jittery, and all of those things, you run the gamut of all of those unpleasant feelings. So peace was important. That painting there gave me peace. I felt peace when I painted it. And when I looked at it afterwards, I felt peace. And I still do. When I look at that one, I feel the peace and quiet of the sea, the sound of the waves, and the beautiful su sun that sinks down below the sea. Just peaceful. So that fulfilled the need for peace in my heart and my soul and my body. The next phase I went through was a bit of despair, a bit of bat stuff, why me, you know, all of the stuff that you people know all about. Why has this happened to me? And I was, to say, gloomy maybe was the word, but I started that piece and that, that one is about me and my journey. I kind of got the inspiration, it just happened, that one. I picked up the brush and started to paint with darkness, which was my diagnosis. And then as I went through the painting, I put myself in the background and brought in all the colours of healing. I'm into colour therapy and into colour healing. Colours make a difference to how you feel inside you. So as I got better, I could progress through the spectrum into greens of healing greens, through to the purple at the top, which is a spiritual color and connects you with the universe or, or whatever you like to believe in God, the universe, in, in your spirit. Purple connects you. And then through that, into the whiteness of healing. So that piece for me was very cathartic. I felt very emotional after I'd finished it. I think I probably cried for three days, but it washed away a lot of the, the desperate feelings that I was having at the time. I'm sure that you can all identify with that feelings of desperation. And it put a smile on my face and I can look out and see lots of people with lovely smiles on their faces. Very important to smile and to laugh because that is healing and therapeutic. The next piece after that, actually it's a little bit out of sequence, but we needed to do that, is this piece here, which is, I'm sure you'll, you'll see what that is, it's crystal, crystal healing. Um, I did a bit of a course in energy healing before this all happened to me. And crystals were a part of it. They're beautiful. They come from the earth. So they're natural. I mean, you can believe what you like about them, but they are beautiful pieces to have. <clears throat> so I painted this piece from the rainbow. So all the colors of the rainbow are in this piece. And that to me is a healing piece of art that I felt um, <clears throat> has an explanation. The blackness, obviously, is the darkness of ourselves. The red is, is uh, uh, movement and uh, passion and everything else that might you might feel connects with the, the colour red. Then there's orange, 
yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet. So that's the colours of the rainbow. After that period, I went into something a little more light and, and happy. And that was my flower period. I love painting flowers, particularly in that format as semi-abstract, um, large flowers on a large canvas. Flowers are God's gift to us and they lift your spirit and make you feel wonderful. And most women would, would appreciate that flowers are lovely. We love to get flowers, don't we? We love flowers. Guys, I know it's not a guy thing, but if you have a, a wonderful lady in your life, she likes flowers. Never forget that. Flowers lift your spirit. So I started painting flowers. That one, I think that one was my first flower. I've got a, a whole series of those kind of big faced flowers, but that one is a daisy, kind of not photo real, because I think if you want photo real, you, you, you take a photo. It's an impressionistic view of a daisy or a daisy chain. <coughs> Things. Um, I painted quite a, a number of fl uh, flowers and they're all on my, well I don't have a website but I'm actually involved in a, in a site that does, Fan Art Review. I've got a page on that so if anybody was interested to see further paintings, uh, it's in the Myeloma News, you can look that up there. Next period is the fireworks. Now that was, that was painted this year, like after the New Year's fireworks in Sydney. I watched the program, I suppose everybody else did too, watch the fireworks and they were spectacular. <coughs> to me, that signifies vi uh, um, spiritual liberation, um, explosive colour, hope for the future, and uh, the beginning of a wonderful year that we can all look forward to and all make progress. So that was sort of enlightenment for me. Happiness, explosion, let's get on with life feeling. After that, I'm moving into this little one down on the floor, the angel one. When you start painting, I think it's a great idea to look back at the old masters just to see how they did it. Go on the journey with them, their feelings. That is a, a part of a Leonardo da Vinci painting, which um, was, I think it was the Virgin of the Rocks and that was the angel in, the, in that particular painting. I went there because I wanted to explore somebody who'd passed on, how he was, and of course Leonardo is the master of all masters, as we all know. Um, so that piece taught me a lot about uh, faces, uh, light and shade, and just the sort of old worldliness of somebody who's been very famous in his time. That piece is one of my favourites. I have that one in my bedroom and I'm calling it my guardian angel. We all need a guardian angel. That's my guardian angel. Um, if you want a guardian angel, that can be copied and, and, and printed on canvas, just like that, just like that. 